Boa noite, pessoal. Estamos aqui com mais uma sessão da Horror Expo Lives, recebendo a presença ilustre do maestro John Massari. Good night, John. It's an honor to have you here. Olá, Hora Expo. Tudo bem? <laughs> Tudo bem, my friend. <laughs> so, we're delighted to, to have you here with us on board, talking about your experience. Mm -hmm. How did you start working with professional soundtracks and composition for movies and cinema, cinema and TV? Well, uh, two things. You should have a good, the craft, whatever craft you pick, you should be as excellent as it as you possibly can. It has to be part of your life. You have to be, it has to be, part of you and you have to be part of it that is one thing you have to be not not just not just an expert at it but it has to be part of your life you have to be dreaming about it at night you have to be thinking about it during the day it has to be a very active part of your life that's one two you have to get along with people mm -hmm. <laughs> and those are the two most important things so if you have those things and you um, associate within the community of the people that do what you do, something wonderful will happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's great, that's great. You work with several major projects like 24 Hours, like Prison Break, mm -hmm. and you made an amazing job in Killer's Crow, Killer's Cloud from Outer Space. What are, are the, the the most challenge work that you made in the soundtracks? Oh my goodness. Well, it's, it's always the most difficult are the ones you don't hear about. <laughs> uh, there are a good uh, not, not every situation you work with professionally is nice and smooth. Sometimes you work with people with variety of personalities that it's very hard to get through anything. Uh, you know, it's just like in real life. If you don't get along with someone, if there's something wrong with the personality, it's just not going to work out. Uh, mm -hmm. But I must say, for the most part, the majority of projects that I have worked with, uh, worked on, have been wonderful experiences. Um, as far as being challenging, it's uh, the challenge is a joy. Uh, for instance, mm -hmm. when I did Prison Break, I had to think of, I had to put myself in the world of the Prison Break and come up with something that's obviously different than anything else I, I have oh, yeah, yeah. previously. So that's where the challenge comes in. You don't want to do the same thing and kind of like fit it into every new project. There's someone I went to school with that's very good with changing his music score is always different, um, which is Christopher Young. He's got a new movie coming out, by the way, and, um, mm -hmm. and, and and myself too. I I think if I did the same type of thing all the time, I, I it would be painful. So it's finding something new that you take joy in when you compose music to work with the ver variety of different projects. That's, that's, uh, that's a challenge, but it's a very welcome challenge. Mm -hmm. When you're working in, in the new projects, did, did they usually send you the, the final videos or you get it, the, the scripts with general ideas? Actually, in my particular career, it's been very rare, rare that I get a script ahead of time. Usually everything is finished and I'm watching the finished product to go through. Uh, there was only one occasion, oh, maybe two or three occasions, where I was hired while they were in production, and me meaning they were still going and directing scenes. That, um, I read the script, and um, it was very awkward to watch the movie because when I read the script, I envisioned something completely different that when, yeah. I, that when I saw on screen that I wish I would have not read the script, maybe read a, a story outline 
instead of reading the script. Um, however, one thing you can get from the script is maybe the main emotion of the film and you can start working, you know, composing music to that. But mainly, most of the time it's like, boom, start. <laughs> You had the opportunity also to do the live presentations of Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Mm -hmm. How was the experience of conducting the, the orchestra with your own compositions? This would well, be amazing. Well, yeah, I, you, you know, I've been, I've been thinking about that for the longest time to, to, to make, put that experience into words. And I can say it's like this, I, felt this is my emotion what i was going through when i was conducting my music played with an orchestra mm -hmm. with the film on a big screen at a big a big audience behind me i felt mm -hmm. like i made a dinner and everyone was sitting enjoying the the meal and mm -hmm. i was very content that they were happy <laughs> so that's what it, that's what it is for me the fact that this extended family of mine that is basically mm -hmm. Uh, my nieces and nephews and uh, children and grandchildren and new f all kinds of friends. I feel that they're all very content and comfortable and have enjoying themselves. And that makes me feel good that they're enjoying themselves. It must be really. Yes. And the fact that we. Special occasion. Yes, it's very special. And uh, I must say that I had the most professional people working with me to make that a reality. Um, I had wonderful musicians and stage people and sound people and technical people that everything went flawlessly because they're, they're, they're experts at what they do. Yeah. And they believed in what I was doing as crazy as it was. We had musicians that played played for John Williams and it played mm -hmm. for uh, Ennio Morricone. They played for everyone uh, in the world yeah. and they mm -hmm. were there playing for me and uh, because they believed in the project and, and maybe they liked me. <laughs> That's good. I saw some videos was beautiful, beautiful, just perfect. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. There's a lot of energy in the room. The Kyoto brothers were there. Uh, mm -hmm. The cast was there. Some of the stunt people were there. Some of the, um, some of the technical people, the, the person who, the, the uh, Christopher Ross who edited the film was there. The Kyoto brothers were there. Um, and, and fans from all over the country came mm -hmm. to see it. And it was just a really surreal experience. Yeah, I can imagine. When you're working in new music, are you using virtual or orchestrations as well? Am I using what orchestrations? Virtual and samples. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. well, yes, those are the tools of the trade. I mean, you have to, mm -hmm. uh, it's expected uh, in today's world that you have uh, at the, the least, the best uh, software that makes virtual uh, orchestras sound as as realistic as possible um, and that's at the least and at the best that you have customized samples mm -hmm. so I also have a customized um, software that I use that I, I can only use myself it's it's for my setup and a variety of techniques in mm -hmm. order to create the realism of uh, like if we had to do orchestral music, for instance, to to capture that, uh, recreate it, uh, so to speak. Um, and so that's always uh, challenging. And it's always challenging to do that differently. So it doesn't sound like you're using the same instruments the same oh, way yeah. Yeah, yeah. over and over again. You always think of some something that you could do to uh, recreate magic. And the quality of the new virtual instruments are, are huge right now. It's incredible. It's just absolutely wonderful. I mean, uh, I know some of the developers and uh, sometimes I get things in advance and uh, it's a lot of fun to work with. Mm -hmm. Talking about horror soundtracks, mm -hmm. what are your top five best that, that you enjoy most? Uh, as far as horror soundtracks, it's interesting. My favorite horror soundtracks aren't really horror soundtracks. 
<laughs> but they sound like horror soundtracks. Really? Um, uh, for instance, uh, the movie There Will Be Blood. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're familiar with that film. That had yeah. a riveting score mm -hmm. that could that can be used in a horror movie if it had to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I really like I, I really like the work of um, Joseph Bishara. Mm -hmm. uh, he's very um, very in innovative uh, composer, and I also, of course I also know him in uh, as a as a colleague. Um, uh, there's also Christopher Young. Uh, those are the, the top top of the list. Very innovative, um, because you're not just wanting to do. Um, you're just not wanting to do something that's just scary. Um, you want to be able to do something that um, uh, that provides a certain innovation. You know. Yeah. And uh, let me ask you a quick question: Are we editing this? Are you going to be yes, editing? Yes, oh, good. yes. Let me yes. take a quick break and not like a few seconds and look up something. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay. I wish I had my fact checker here. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, come on, John. Let's get the, uh, the computer. I always little... prefer to do this recorded because we have more, more space. Yes. And it's okay. easier also. Uh, okay. Uh, that one of my another favorite composer of mine is Michael Abels. I love his music to uh, his uh, uh, "Get Out" and "Us." Oh yeah, and yeah, when yeah. When I, I know. first saw mm -hmm. get, "Get Out," I was like, applauding <laughs> the whole time because you could tell the composer, you could tell that the composer Michael Abels uh, is starting out from ground zero he's just making music that it, it's okay mm -hmm. i'm going to make my scary music and here it is and he's also a very accomplished composer he he composes he gets uh commissions to write uh, uh concert works so mm -hmm. uh that's another it, favorite composer of mine is fresh music right yeah yeah it's yeah. A, when you see it you go you listen to it and you say ah that's well i mean when I look at a film, I look at it critically sometimes. Mm -hmm, of course. Listen with a critical ear to learn something, not mm -hmm. to uh, um, not not to criticize. Of course. It's, mm -hmm. it's critical from the point of, oh my goodness, how did how it is that what is that? That's very interesting. So um, so I would say those three composers um, come on close to my radar. Mm -hmm. And your favorite horror movies? Favorite horror movies are, are my, it's it's bizarre. Um, uh, I I almost don't know the names of them, you know. Okay. But okay. The, from the classic um, um, horror movie uh, genre, I would say um, uh, The Shining. Oh um, yeah. And there's a series called Castle Rock. By, mm -hmm, the, same, I know. by the same author, of course. Um, very. Uh, Castle that that was uh, um, David Newman does a score for that, but uh, I, I love the psychological. I, when I go for horror, I go for more mm -hmm. of the psychological. Um, mm -hmm. I, I saw the Nun. I, I thought that mm -hmm. I was fascinated because it looked like a 1950s horror film shot. That's true. That's true. Shot recently, and it was refreshing to see that there was a lot of mm -hmm. what looked to be practical effects. And uh, just regular, great editing and great staging, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's a beautiful movie, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. So those are some of my favorites. Mm -hmm. What would be your advice for a young composer that wants to start working in, in TV, cinema, and also in the gaming industry? Well, um, I can't really comment on the gaming industry although my some of my music is used in games mm -hmm. i i that's not a, a field that i pursue uh doing mm -hmm. games um i have an opinion about games because i used to be an avid gamer and i'm, oh, really? no, I'm no longer an avid Why? gamer <laughs> well uh the no i won't name the names of the um games that i play because they're very addictive but mm -hmm during the time that I learned and mastered those games, I could have 
maybe learned, uh, you know, the complete uh, piano sonata cycle of various composers. Mm -hmm. I could have done something that I think was more constructive. Of course. Uh, so I'm, that's all I'm going to say. I don't play. <laughs> all right. I, I, right. I kind of went cold turkey on playing games. And uh, it's not something I pursue. Uh, you know, when it comes to me, yes, mm -hmm. but for mm -hmm. me to pursue it, no. So, okay, so that's the, with games. So the games, you're going to have to ask someone else. But for movies, you, you, you want to associate with people who direct and produce films, even if they're just beginning, just starting. And it's not easy, um, you know, to, to get a relationship with someone early on and keep that relationship going through an entire career. It's actually kind of rare. It doesn't always, it doesn't always happen. Um, but you want to be able to work with a variety of people on a variety of projects. And you want them to become kind of like, not just your circle of friends, not just people you rely on for work and income, but someone that you grow with over time. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So it's all about I, I can't developing. say I can't say go to this school, study mm -hmm. this music, because you have to find the education that suited for you. You have to have the discipline that's uh, that's going to uh, be competitive. Uh, when I say competitive, there are some people that are just lazy. You can't you really can't be lazy. You got to kind of be on the ball. People expect results mm -hmm. because film composing is the the phase of film production it's called post-production and that's where everything starts to happening fast because they have to finish the product which is the film and mm -hmm. get it out so your job cannot hang up the rest of the movie so that's uh i just want to say that and if you're going to go to university make sure that you don't graduate with student loans um, I was oh, very, yeah. I was very lucky when I went to university, I got a academic scholarship and I worked during the summer and I worked while I was at school. So I actually had all my bills paid. And when I graduated, I had no debt whatsoever. Nothing, nothing at all. Nothing to pay off. Yeah. Nothing mm -hmm. to pay off at all. Cause I was paying for it as I, you know, I would okay, work for okay. it mm -hmm. and pay for it. And the scholarships helped out. There was certain societies that uh, I got scholarship for books, for instance. Well, that was mm -hmm. back when people read books. <laughs> um, and I used to buy used books because <laughs> mm -hmm. they still had the same words. As a matter of fact, if it was a used book by a student who was a, um, a very good student, he, had, he or she had notes in the margins that helped out. So, mm -hmm. um, and uh, keep your expenses down. Uh, and also, if you're going to go to university, make sure you take psycho psychology 101 and 102. Make mm -hmm. sure that you know that because you're going to be working with, in the media industry, you're going to be working with a variety of people with psychoses and neuroses. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Especially in the horror industry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not yeah. so much in the horror industry, but it's basically everywhere. Yeah, at all media. levels. At all levels. I'm not saying that you're going to work for crazy directors, although mm -hmm. you probably could. But you could be working with people beneath them and below. You just got to learn. Um, I had to go back and reread all my notes for my psych, psych psychology yeah. classes uh, because uh, yeah. I, I did that class. I didn't study hard enough. <laughs> Well, we must be a little crazy to be in the media industry also. It is tough. It's not an easy <laughs> business at all. It's not an easy business at all. It's not an easy business to, to be good at and then find your place. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm very fortunate and, you know, uh, uh, with the things that I've worked on that were very mm -hmm. rewarding to me that I'm very proud of. Um, and it, it's, it, doesn't all, it doesn't come easy. And, and I won't mention any names, but I have colleagues that do what I do that they, uh, they're very hard on themselves. Yeah. And uh, they shouldn't be, you know, because they're doing so well, but they're, they're, they're thinking like three steps ahead uh, a mm -hmm. lot of the time. So you have to learn also how to enjoy yourself, how to be happy and content with the work you do. That's true. That's true. That's a very good advice.
talking about the streaming industry for music, yes. what do you think about in, as a musician and producer? Well, uh, the way I do, I just finished uh, a collection of uh, Christmas music for um, uh, a pretty big outfit um, called Extreme Music that's also part of Bleeding Fingers uh, that's, uh, that's under the umbrella of Sony mm -hmm. Pictures, Sony Music. Okay. And I finished a bunch of Christmas music for it, I, you know, and uh, that has been a good thing. And there are a variety of companies like that, that um, you can write music that will become part of trailers, that will become part of commercials. It'll be sometimes they'll use them in movies sometimes they'll use them on reality sh just that anything you can imagine radio shows so music that i wrote a long time ago like 30 years ago <laughs> wow you're still making money to this day i'm so su i'm surprised it, it just be wow. it's it just blows me away but you there are a variety of companies that do library music um mm -hmm. I have my music with several different uh, firms. That's one act, that's the streaming. Mm -hmm. That's what I consider streaming because that will get used, that will get licensed and purchased by a variety of outlets. But are you talking about streaming in that like uh, people who do movies that only play on YouTube? What, what specifically are you? No, no, it's streaming your music on, on Spotify and digital platforms in general? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what it, there are soundtracks that I've done that mm -hmm. uh, that are on Spotify. Uh, but if you're talking about being an artist yourself, I would say you could probably, you know, uh, don't think if you're an artist, let's say if you have, you have a band, I think it's um, doing a physical uh, release of your music is very rare. And mm -hmm. uh, you should, if it's you're almost like to, a souvenir right now. Exactly. So, so whereas you may want to may, maybe make a small batch of mm -hmm. whatever it is. I, vinyl is, is hotter than CDs now. It's, it's kind oh, yeah. of went back and forth. Um, but uh, there's YouTube. There's, there's so many um, venues for that. There's no excuse not to do original music and mm -hmm. put it out there and, and create an audience. Get an audience that will respond to your music. Uh, and that happens on, uh, you could, the, you, there's not only Spotify, there's iTunes, there's, um, there's YouTube. You can do YouTube, I think, by yourself on your mm -hmm. own. And uh, there's, a, there's a way you work um, uh, the Google uh, algorithm so that it, your, all your tracks are ID'd. Uh, but that's where you need some, something like an aggregator. Yeah, a digital because, distributor, yeah. Yeah, yeah someone yeah, that will yeah. like put it out to all those people you could do it yourself but it's you know it's a it's it's a very administrative administratively it's very time consuming and it mm -hmm. requires a different expertise and uh you may want to like focus your expertise on creating great content and maybe working with a distributor that understands that you want to be able to just stream your uh stream your music um and it's interesting because I'm noticing there's more and more of my music that plays on all the streaming services. And I don't know what they are. I don't, uh, Spotify does not play movies, right? No. Correct? Okay. So it must be other things that they're mm -hmm. playing of mine um, that I'm not aware of because they just go under a general heading of whatever the, the, the right now, I think there's like blanket licensing agreements with, with that, with what I do at least. But I would say uh, if, you, if you're an artist, you wanna just create your own album and what have you, um, do something that speaks to you. And if you're able to perform live, that's mm -hmm. even better, you know? Um, uh, well, when, when the COVID goes away, that will be better. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Talking about the, the pandemic situation, mm -hmm. did it affect your productions in this year? Well, I, I had rec I, I did some recording with orchestra, but I had to, I hit hit a space in time during the uh, latter part of the summer where restrictions were lifted in Europe, and so mm -hmm. I recorded I recorded in Europe. All right, all right. Uh, I recorded in Prague. And, Prague, okay. Uh, and I did it remotely. I didn't go to Prague. 
Um, but there are uh, other uh, musicians that I recorded throughout the world and here where they just recorded it at home on their home setup mm -hmm. um, and, and sent me the tracks and then I incorporated them into the, uh, my session. But that's how I've been dealing with it. We've been doing a lot of remote recording. There are some sessions that opened up at uh, Warner Brothers last week that a lot of my friends played at. And the configuration of musicians is much different than it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, everyone had to get a COVID test before they come in. And when everyone's clear, then they can have a regular uh, session. But they still stay far further apart than they used to. Um, All right. But uh, there, there have been a few sessions at Warner Brothers. I can't tell you what the project was, but mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, little by little. But th it seems like we're getting a, another wave coming up, so that restrictions may. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's really complicated. I think we will start going back again on the second half of the next year, maybe. Yes, I think, you know, I, I, I would like to do something for next Halloween, that's for sure. I mean, this weekend, I'm going to Las Vegas, but mm -hmm. it's very structured. I'm doing an appearance where I'm going to be in a shop where there's only four people, four to five people allowed at a time, and they have to stay apart from each other. Obviously, everyone wears a mask, mm -hmm. and um, we, uh, you know, we want to respect everyone's uh, health. But so things are happening, but it's not as bad as it was, let's say, like in April. Will you do it in the Nightmare store in Vegas? Uh, oh. That is Hellbound. It's called mm. uh, Hellbound Horror in Las Vegas. It will be an event. Yeah, it's a signing event. I'm bringing some All of right, my. Right. I'm bringing some of goodies of mine. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, I'm looking at some things that are taking up a lot of space. <laughs> no, there's some things that I have a huge poster, like a giant poster that could, it's like uh, eight feet long and like, you know, three and a half, four feet wide. Um, I don't think I could take it on the plane though, unfortunately. <laughs> All right, my friend. It was a, a pleasure to meet you. Hope but, in the future to bring you with us to Horror Expo in Brazil. I would love to. That would be so wonderful to be there. Uh, in person and to see all the beautiful people. And I will try to learn a few phrases in Portuguese. Yeah, of course. We'll have another killer clause in the future. Well, okay. That's a good, very good question. Very, very good question. Okay. Uh, if it was up to me, we'd be doing all kinds of things with killer clowns. If it was up to the Kyoto brothers, the creators of the brand, we, they would be doing all kinds of things with it. Mm -hmm. Killer Clowns from Outer Space is owned by MGM. So okay. you go to MGM.com, you go to the contacts, and it's going to give you an address. And you can either mm -hmm. leave maybe an email or you can write a postcard and mm -hmm. say something as simple. I love Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Are you going to make another one? as simple as that you know if they get a if they get enough uh response from the audience i mean look they did bill and ted's extra uh excellent we, we need a new one it's right especially did, because sure they did uh, they said child's play uh yeah. isn't ghostbusters warner brothers i think i mean um ghostbusters mgm i'm not sure but that's a different uh, genre mm -hmm. but yes we do need another one yeah. and, and we uh, have uh, the new it with pennywise and, and everything so Yes. We need Claire Klaus back. Yes. And then um, I'm going to be doing another concert. Mm -hmm. So right. uh, we can look out for that. Hopefully that will have I, the concert is written. It's like an opera. There's the libretto is, mm -hmm. is done. The hardest part is done. Now it's just finding the venue that we can have uh, a good number of people come and have fun. All right. Okay, John, it was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you, sir. A really special interview. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. And hello to everyone in Brazil. And I forgot to, I forgot everything I learned in Portuguese just now. But anyways, I love you all. Mwah! Take care, brother. Take care.